the world's largest snake den, an unusual rabbit place, and an Indian wildlife sanctuary that turned into one big lantern. It's worth a look. This is Smart Pizza, and in this episode, I'll show you the places where animals congregate in mass. Let's go. Ilha de Quemada Grande A snake den is a real horror, a place that frightens everyone, even those who are not particularly afraid of these slithering creatures. Usually, we see a bunch of snakes only in movies and think that, in reality, it's impossible to see such a place. But the island called Ilha de Quemada Grande proves us the opposite. It's located 22 miles from the Brazilian coast. From the outside, it seems that it's just a paradise on Earth. A very cozy, nice green piece of land, which would be nice to visit to relax. But if people take a closer look, everything immediately falls into place. Ilha de Queimara Grande is home to several thousand snakes, crawling literally at every turn. And it would be okay if they were all non-venomous, but they're venomous. They belong to the species of Golden Lancehead, incredibly venomous pit vipers that live exclusively in Brazil. One bite of this lancehead is enough to kill a human within the next hour, and since it's time-consuming to swim from this island to Brazil and find doctors, consider that a golden lancehead bite on the island guarantees a person's death. It's not hard to guess that people wouldn't want to live in such an environment, so the island is deserted. But how did this place become a breeding ground for dangerous snakes in the first place? They couldn't have taken over the island, could they? Legend has it that in the past, pirates hid their many treasures on Ilha de Quemara Grande and then to protect them, polluted the small island with a giant number of venomous snakes. It's up to you whether to believe this legend or not. There's another theory. According to it, the island did not exist in the past. Ilha de Quemara Grande was part of Brazil, but suddenly the water level began to rise rapidly and soon it cut off the land from the mainland, turning it into an island. With the isolation, the ancestor of the pit viper became the dominant species, which had virtually no enemies and could evolve in its own way, not like the snakes on the mainland. Because the basis of nutrition due to species scarcity was birds, the golden lance had needed stronger venom. Due to the fact that the venom of this snake is five times stronger than its mainland relatives, it instantly kills its prey. The target of the attack of this predator is most often birds that sit on trees to rest. So the snakes spread across the island in a fairly short period of time. The conditions are favorable, no one disturbs them, it's just a paradise for golden lanceheads. Have you ever heard of such a thing as bioluminescence? It's a phenomenon in which a chemical reaction causes living organisms to glow. Well, that's exactly what makes the fireflies in the Indian Wildlife Sanctuary produce flashes of light. It's just amazing. The place where huge and dangerous animals, such as elephants and tigers, rule during the day becomes a stage for tiny creatures in the evening. At nightfall, the forest is illuminated by literally millions, if not billions of lights. These bugs have a special light organ, and it's this organ that turns on at night. The bugs light up for a reason. It's a call for mating games. Less often, they may communicate with each other in such a way, inform about the approaching danger, or even mislead. There are predatory fireflies that prey on their own kind. Can you imagine that? In nature, there's a female that purposely lights up as if it's ready to mate. However, if a male comes to visit it with an open soul and good intentions, it's immediately caught in its mouth without a chance for mercy. Another magical thing about these bugs is their ability to synchronize with their congeners. Millions of creatures simultaneously light up and extinguish, create unique patterns and scatter into separate pieces. Of course, not all of the many species of fireflies have such a talent to light up simultaneously. In addition, the glow depends on the density of habitat of these insects. But in the tiger reserve, it's very high, so the local forest turns into a magical theater of light and shadows. Pink Flamingos Camargue is a park in the south of France, and the only place in Europe where you can see pink flamingos. Of course, other living creatures also live there. For example, there are 272 species of bird in the park, but the main ones are still pink flamingos. In winter, they have a richer color than in summer. 
This is caused by the fact that they eat small crustaceans with huge amounts of substance called carotene, which affects their color. Visiting Camargue, you'll be able to see not just one or two of these beautiful birds, but several thousand members of this rare species at once. In fact, it's the largest colony of flamingos in the western part of the Mediterranean. To get better acquainted with it, it's recommended to take at least one tour, of which there are many. Speaking of tours, imagine the face of people who bought tickets in 2007, were waiting bad for this moment, and the flamingos just took off and left the place. How's that possible? It's really quite simple. It was something of a strike by the birds. They didn't like that the activity of the nearest salt factory led to a side effect in the form of pumping salt water into the lagoon where flamingos nested. As a result of this boycott, the pumping stopped and the area was sold to the French government agency responsible for coastal protection. Since then, experts began to monitor the environment and the flamingos returned. Rabbit Island Sounds like a place from some cartoon, doesn't it? But in fact, it's more than a real site located between the islands of Honshu and Shikoku in the inland sea of Japan. The area of the island is only 0.2 square miles, but that's enough to surprise visitors. Only rabbits live there, and there are at least 700 of them. Don't worry, once on the island, you do not lose them out of sight. They're literally everywhere. These animals are wild, but because of hunger, they're almost completely devoid of fear and instinct of self-preservation. Also, due to the lack of natural enemies on the island, they're extremely sociable and are ready to cling to every traveler from all their sides in order to get some kind of treat from them. Besides, rabbit hunting is strictly prohibited there. Nevertheless, the island's history is not as rosy as it may first appear. In the past, there was a secret plant for the development of production of chemical weapons. It was built in the late 1920s. It's easy to guess that because of this, the island was erased from the maps, so no one knew about it. Time passed, outsiders were forbidden to enter, and the plant was producing 6,000 tons of toxic gases a year. The only creatures on the island besides humans were rabbits, which were used here as experimental subjects. After the end of hostilities, the plant was erased not only from the map, but also from the face of the earth. Here it would be possible to end the story and tell that supposedly the rabbits managed to survive, reproduce, and take over the island. But it wasn't like that. People simply came and eliminated the remaining rabbits, not because of their cruelty, but because they were infected and could negatively affect the environment. To atone for their guilt, the Japanese promptly brought in new, already fully healthy rabbits and allowed them to flourish and develop in peace. It was a reminder to the people themselves that life will still conquer the shameful desire of humans to exterminate each other. The island called Aitoliko is truly beautiful. Southern sun, mild climate, warm water. What could go wrong? But here come the spiders, which are much better than tourists in terms of competition for a place in the sun. Finding themselves in ideal climatic solutions, they begin to actively mate, which is why very soon the whole coastline, including bushes, trees, and an island infrastructure are covered with dense cobwebs. The scenery is truly eerie, reminiscent of a setting of a horror movie like The Mist. And when you think about the fact that all of this is not the work of architects or designers, it becomes even scarier. That's all, guys. Which of these places would you like to visit? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you later.